Good morning, guys. Dr. Val here with Abundant Life Restored. Welcome to Coffee Chats. I am on time this week. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that I think that is foundational, but I haven't really spelled it out before. And that is, <clears throat> I have mentioned the phrase in uh, past videos about the finding and getting to the root cause of disease. This is something that is a paradigm shift, and it was for me as a doctor, and it is for you in understanding your health. And so I'm going to explain a little bit more today about what I mean by that, about when I'm talking about the root cause and, and why does eating healthier or this or that have anything to do with my <clears throat> autoimmune disease or my anxiety level or my uh, insomnia or all these things. Um, what is it? I mean, we all know that, well, we should probably eat healthier, but <clears throat> there are there are things that I want to talk about today and try to help you understand that the today's healthcare model and what your doctor has told you about conditions, about these uh, things that we have called disease labels uh, that we give people. I want to explain some things about where they're coming from and where I'm trying to get get everyone to. Um, because if you can start to understand this, then that changes the control that you have over your own health. And <clears throat> this is not your doctor's fault that they don't understand any of this because this is not the way they were trained, believe me. Um, there is a whole lot of paradigm shifts that I myself have gone through. I was trained in family medicine, went through med school, four years of med school, three years of residency, and then practiced as a family medicine physician. Um, <clears throat> but even early on in residency, I was thinking, this isn't really getting to the bottom core of these diseases to actually help people. And I couldn't articulate it, but I knew there was more to our understanding of health. Um, so let me back up. If you go to the doctor, I'll explain some things. And you're given a diagnosis of hypertension, which is high blood pressure. The medical understanding that your doctor has of the cause of that disease well, that depends on your age. Uh, if you are, say, 65, 75, if you're older, then the cause usually is, well, it's just kind of part of normal aging. Your uh, walls of all of your arteries um, lose their elasticity over time, and uh, that makes that pipe more stiff, it doesn't stretch with every heartbeat, and if you decrease the um, diameter of a pipe with fluid going through it, it increases the pressure on the inside. And it's just normal, and there's not anything we can do about it. Here, take this uh, blood pressure medication. You'll, we'll adjust it. You'll be on it the rest of your life. Um, that's the the root cause and the explanation of hypertension or blood pressure as you age. And that might be increased because, well, everyone in your family also has high blood pressure. So the fact that you're in your 40s and your blood pressure is elevated, well, you just got genes for it. It's in your genes. Um, or there are certain races that are more prone to higher blood pressures uh, earlier on in life. Sorry, it's just in your genetics, it's uh, in your race genetics, it's et cetera, et cetera. There's nothing we can do about it. Here, take this blood pressure medication for the rest of your life. Um, those are some common causes that I was taught in med school, and you don't ever look beyond that. And 
as a patient sitting on the other side, you're like, well, I can't do anything about my genetics. I can't do anything about my age. Those are factors that I have no control over. And so I guess I just have to take the blood pressure medication for the rest of my life. So that system of understanding between what, as a patient, what you have heard from your doctor and what your doctor is telling you and their understanding, um, I believe are incomplete because the root cause of why some of this happens over time, we'll get into that. But in understanding there's more to things than your genetics. There's a lot more that um, your genetics play a role, but very, very rarely, honestly, in my new understanding of how genetics um, and how the genes that you have are turned off and turned on throughout your life. This is not Jeanette Mandelian uh, genetic expression like my eyes are blue, they'll always be blue. A plus B equals C. They're not set in stone. Most of the genes that you have um, are actually very fluid in how much they're expressed. And we are scratching the surface on our understanding of that. It's a whole field called epigenetics, which I don't think I'd heard of before five years ago. Um, so your disease and the control over your disease is not locked in your genetics. Uh, it plays a role, absolutely. But it's only one piece of the puzzle. Uh, it's not locked in your age. Um, the cell function within each cell and the ability to have energy um, and do that cellular job well, very little of that changes through age. Um, there's a lifestyle of things that will build up in the body with age that if you can change that and detox all these things that the body has accumulated over its lifetime and reverse the chronic inflammation through X, Y, and Z, uh, there's a ton of things that can literally be reversed regardless of your age. Um, none of that was taught to me in med school. And so I want people to understand that this is a paradigm shift in understanding there is more that you can do for your health than what your doctor is telling you because they don't know. Um, um, I'll give you another example for diabetes. Um, doctors say, well, the root cause of diabetes is insulin resistance. And yes, some of that may, there are doctors out there who admit, well, yes, it's our high sugar diets um, um, make the pancreas have to constantly pump out insulin and so these receptors over here are down regulated and these ones your 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 cells over here are resistant to that signal that when insulin gets pumped out the cells just don't respond to it so the body keeps pumping out more and more and more and more and over time then your pancreas wears out and it can't produce enough insulin and so therefore when you do eat your sugars stay really high and the body doesn't have enough insulin in order to, because what, what it does have, the body's resistant to it, so your sugars stay really high. And this is how you end up a diabetic. And so you end up taking insulin to uh, keep your sugars under control. And when your sugars are under control, we say your diabetes is managed. Well, um, is that really the root cause of insulin resistance? Is there something beyond that? Are there ways that the body can have a reset on that resistance and how the body is handling insulin? Um, medicine doesn't go any farther than to say, well, you need to eat healthier, follow the um, diabetic guidelines, and uh, exercise, and take your insulin, take your medications. Um, the medications are do nothing to really reverse your insulin resistance. There's only one medication out there that actually helps that process. Most of the time, it's only masking the process. It's masking the problem. 
Um, so it's not actually reversing anything, it's managing your symptoms. So it doesn't get back to the root cause, either to treat it or um, to give good guidelines on what you can do to improve your health in terms of your diabetes. Um, hypothyroid is another example. Uh, low thyroid production of thyroid hormone is very common, very common. Um, if you were older, well, the excuse was, well, your thyroid is just tired and it's just not putting out as much thyroid as, uh, as it used to. That's the excuse. Um, young women who would come in or women in their 30s would come in with low thyroid, extremely common, way, way more common than I ever assumed. And um, the excuse was, well, it was something probably triggered in pregnancy. Um, pregnancy is a big stressor, and after pregnancies, you can have lingering thyroid uh, issues for years. And, um, you know, with young kids, you just you explain all the fatigue and the um, lack of energy on just, well, I've got three little kids running around, and I don't get enough sleep. And, you know, you explain all that away. And so... As they get older, you finally go into your doctor and they check you 10 years later or 20 years later and go, yeah, you have low thyroid. It was probably from your pregnancy. Um, without actually understanding the root cause. Uh, very, We're very dismissive in a lot of ways that gets the doctor off the hook because there's nothing else to look for. There's nothing else to look up. We explain it as, well, it must be this, it must be that, it must be that, and there's nothing we can do about any of that. Um, so here, take this synthetic thyroid hormone for the rest of your life. That is the answer. That is managing a symptom. It does not get to the root cause of a disease. Um, so what happens is you go to your doctor, you get labeled with a, a disease label that is basically just a label for a lot of symptoms that you're having. And then you're put on medications to manage those symptoms. And that's as good as medicine can do. That is all the answers that they have is, well, there's nothing we can do about that, that, or that. And so take this medication for the rest of your life, whether it's for your migraine, whether it's for your um, heartburn, whether it's for your autoimmune disease, there's nothing we can do. Take this medication because, because we can't affect your genetics. We can't affect your history. We can't affect your um, whatever it is that was that trigger, that event. Uh, we have no control over that. And so here, take this medication. That's the only answers that medicine can give. Um, and aging is a very common thing that gets blamed. Genetics is another one. Um, so let me just explain something about uh, med school. In four, hour, four years, not four hours, in four years of medical school knowledge, uh, where you spend hundreds and hundreds of hours getting massive amounts of information, um, anatomy, physiology, micro... Um, microbiology, um, biochemistry, uh, just tons and tons of information. Uh, you get bits and pieces of it, you study for the test, you cram, um, and you don't know what information is going to be most important. What pathways am I supposed to remember for the future? You're really studying for the test. That is really what happens in the very intense uh, parts of um, med school. And uh, the last year, or the second year of med school, the second year of that intense um, process is pharmacology um, towards the end. And starting in, after you finish med school, starting in residency, you finish and really everything then becomes pharmacology. It's Okay, I take this group of, of um, symptoms um, and I've labeled it correctly as a disease. I ordered all the right tests to figure out that that is the disease. And now it's managing pharmacology. It's managing medications. 
that is really what you learn how to do in residency in its entirety. Um, and you... Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm back. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know why my video blacks out, but I've figured out to stop talking when that happens. Because um, you guys can't see it. I think it's just a live uh, issue going live. Um, okay, so in all of the med school hours, uh, most of uh, what you take away into residency is the pharmacology side. Uh, very rarely do you actually have cause to revisit going back to the biochemistry of something or going back to the anatomy of something. Uh, you really are just learning the pharmacology and how to treat the symptom because that's what makes the difference to the patient, right? Um, so out of the hundreds of hours in med school learning anatomy and biochemistry and all that, um, do you know how many hours we ever got on nutrition? And this is pretty much med school wide. This is pretty common uh, in its, I think, average for med schools. Um, we got two hours of nutrition that were actually labeled nutrition. Two hours. Most of those hours, or most of the time of those two hours, were on vitamin deficiencies, the conditions they cause. So zinc deficiency causes this and a um, vitamin C deficiency causes scurvy, and this is what it looks like. And and we looked at, you know, kids in Africa, and, well, this is caused by this, and this is caused by this. Specific um, vitamin deficiencies and vitamin toxicities, so the rare cases of, of what that might look like. Um, that was pretty much the extent of our nutrition education. So... Do not fault your doctor. Your doctor does not understand, has never learned about all the ways that nutrition is triggering essentially every function going on in your body. Um, and even the, we say, well, we, we leave that to the nutritionalist, okay? I want my patient to eat better, so I'm going to send them to the dietitian or the nutritionalist. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some big gaps in their education as well, but I won't, I won't go into that. Needless to say, your doctor does not have a mind that even is looking at disease from this perspective. And so... These are the things that I want you to understand in this paradigm shift. For me, I have had to unlearn a whole lot of things as set in stone, like these conditions are incurable, like these conditions, there's, there's nothing you can do to affect the cellular environment. There's nothing you can do to change this 
fact, quote unquote. Um, I've had to unlearn a lot, a lot more than some of you. So what I'm hoping is that as a patient, I want people to understand, first of all, disease labels, every single one of them, well, 99.8% of them are just labels of symptoms that your body is trying to tell you something. This is really out of whack. And we have so nicely boxed those up as saying, when you have these perfect things, then you have this disease. And when you have this group of symptoms, you have this perfect disease. But every single thing in the body works with every other thing in the body. Very, I mean, we may have isolated symptoms of it's just skin symptoms, it's just stomach symptoms, it's just headache symptoms, it's just this type of symptom. But a lot of those root causes go back to what, what is going on in the individual cell that is making that so overwhelmed that it can't function the way it's supposed to function. And a lot of those root causes um, going back to the cell health um, are virtually the same across every uh, system, whether it's your, your lungs, whether it's your kidneys, whether it's your liver, whether it's your intestines. The cell function is crippled for a number of reasons, or it doesn't have the energy for a number of reasons, or it's full of toxins for a number of reasons, or it doesn't have any of the nutrition that it needs for a number of reasons. Um, so when you start looking at health from a cellular level and then realize there are things that I can do to help out the cell function across my whole body, and guess what? That takes care of all kinds of symptoms that my doctor is giving me eight different medications for, you know, my anxiety, my migraines, my um, heartburn, my autoimmune disease, my high blood pressure, my diabetes, all of those things are symptoms of deficiencies. They're symptoms of lack of cellular energy and, and the ability of the cell to function. They're symptoms of toxification in your body, um, chemical toxins that are building up from lots of exposures. Um, and it's not all genetics. Yeah, your genetics may have a piece of the puzzle where something might be more likely if the right set of circumstance is, uh, plays out, but the expression of many, many genetic conditions can be altered by the environment of the cells. And that is something that is huge. And it's exploding in a lot of research right now. There's whole fields of epigenetics. Um, so your genes do not determine what symptoms you're going to have at all times. That is, that is a huge paradigm shift. So there's, there's three big things that you can affect. Um, and this is why I talk about these things. But getting to the root causes has to start from a cellular level. And this is what medicine throws up his hands and goes, I, I don't know how to influence a cellular level um, fix. I don't know how to do that. Well, let's create a drug to target something in these particular cells or in those particular cells. Well, that's not the way your body was designed. Um, there, everything works in symphony with everything else. What you eat and the nutrition and the source of the things that you're eating play a huge role in your body actually having the things around that it needs to. It comes down to these building blocks of amino acids um, and minerals um, and vitamins that you get out of your food. What you're giving your body has everything to do with the diseases that you have. And medicine today, as it exists, it didn't used to say this, but uh, today's mantra is that food has no bearing whatsoever on disease, period. Uh, you can't change your blood pressure by what you eat. And I believe that's not true. Um, so I do stress a lot of things because you have control over what you eat. No one else does. You do. 
And so that means you have to educate yourself about what is healthy and what is not and what is actually helping the body on a cellular level um, and what is not. Um, so diet and nutrition are a huge piece of getting to the root cause of disease in helping the body have the tools on hand that it needs. Um, detoxing. So toxins, we have them all over from our environment, um, especially in the last um, 50, 60 years. We have so many chemicals around us that we can't, we don't have any control over. Um, and the body doesn't have pathways to deal with a lot of those chemical toxins, and so it just stores them. It stuffs them into a cell, like in a suitcase, um, because it doesn't have receptors for this or that, and it doesn't have a way to excrete it, and it doesn't have a way to get rid of many, many things, and these toxins will build up. And by toxins, I mean um, anything that is not natural out there in the world uh, and there are some things out in nature that your body was never supposed to ingest but uh, chemically speaking we have introduced more chemicals our cleaning products I mean we used to use baking soda and vinegar for pretty much every cleaning uh, thing that we had to do that was pretty normal what your grandparents and great-grandparents used um, was natural products you know some lemon water and some some vinegar and um, some baking soda and you could scrub anything off of anything. Um, but nowadays we don't grab baking soda and water to scrub a pan, we grab soap. And your soaps, your lotions, your body products, your cleaning products, everything you spray all over your house, all over your dishes, what you're washing your dishes in and your silverware, you're getting that in your body. You're absorbing your laundry detergent and your dryer sheets and all that stuff, those chemicals stay in your clothes. That gets absorbed into your skin. Um, we have chemicals in our water to clean it, but there's a lot of chemical residue with that that we say is safe. Um, yeah, well, it's the perfect storm, and that doesn't even take into account all of the chemicals preservatives, colorings, dyes that are in every food product that you eat, uh, every drink that you drink. So your body is taking in all of these things and a lot of it, your body's like, well, I, don't have a, I don't have a thing to do with that. I don't have a receptor. I don't have a way to get rid of it. I don't have a, you know, maybe it is naturally excreted because it happens to be water soluble and the kidneys can filter it out and but there's a lot of things that uh, the body just doesn't know what to do with. And it's been deemed as safe because it's, well, it's minuscule amounts. But if you look at the overall chemical exposure from our environments, our food, the things we work with, the products we spray on our, on our weeds and our grass fertilizers and, you know, every product that you grab that's in a bottle <clears throat> uh, has a... A ton of things in it that your body doesn't know how to deal with. Um, so those are examples of some chemical toxins that your body, um, you know, 100 years ago didn't have to deal with, and now it does. Um, other sources are just our medications. Our synthetic medications uh, have a lot of unnatural things in them. So every time you're taking a pill. Even our vitamins are full of fillers that are not so good. <laughs> well, it's all just fiber. It'll pass through. Well, really? Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of unnatural things in most things that we ingest, and we can't control that. And we can't have heart attacks and anxiety attacks about, oh, my word, you know, it's, it's so unsafe, and what do I do? Well, uh, just know that that is constant. In today's society, in today's industrialized world, those um, toxin exposures are constant. And so your body is constantly trying to um, clean things out and detox. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why that doesn't happen. And so you have to look, again, at the cellular level. How does a cell 
get toxins in? Why does it take it in and how does it get it out? Then there's the whole um, issue of heavy metals and um, things that are coming from lots of different sources again to get heavy metal toxins. Heavy metals are much harder to get out of the body. They will bind in a much uh, different way um, and can be much, much, much harder to get out of the body. And that can lead to a lot of um, physical issues. So detoxing is a part of and that is something that you yourself can do through many natural ways uh, to detox things out of the body um, and to try to decrease your environmental um, exposure because we think, well, for convenience sake, you know, I'm using every cleaner known to market, known to man that's on the market. I'm using my whatever brand, favorite brand of shampoo and my lotion and my makeup and my uh, deodorant and my soaps and my, um, you know, we have, we have control over the things that you put on your body and in your body. And just to realize this is a paradigm shift. Wait, in the name of convenience, maybe this is not good for me. You know, maybe instead of grabbing my favorite carpet cleaner, when the dog went on the carpet or whatever, maybe there's a way that I can use something a little more natural. Hmm that won't then stay in the carpet and be absorbed when I walk on the carpet in my bare feet next week. Um, those are things that you actually have to think about and that takes effort and it takes energy and it takes getting out of that, just doing for something for the sake of uh, convenience and habit. Um, just because it's the best cleaner in the world does not mean you should be spraying it next to where your kids are playing. Um, things to think about. Uh, I'm just, I am presenting all this because this is a paradigm shift of your health and starting to realize everything around you is affecting your health, even though your doctor is saying, no, there's no connection. There's no, that's a bunch of hogwash. It's all this, it's all that. And you need to take this medication for the rest of your life. I'm telling you, this is a paradigm shift, okay? So detoxing diet and nutrition, um, and lifestyle. Okay, this is something that, again, is really up to each individual, is stress reduction. In our um, society, we are habitually, chronically stressed. We live in a fast-paced, um, emotional-driven society where... Everything we do all day long is, uh, we have all this tension and it's very emotional. Um, and things that drain you, things that are stressful, even if you're like, well, I'm handling it. I'm type A personality. I can, I can juggle 55 things and I can, you know, keep all my tension and I can do this and I can do that and I can do this. Um, those are stressing the body. When your body is under chronic stress, it goes into, um, so you've heard of fight or flight, and there is the rest and digest, the sympathetic nervous system that controls your heart rate, it controls your breathing rate, it controls your adrenaline um, uh, release, it controls your digestion, it controls a lot of uh, neurotransmitters and mood stimulation. It adjusts to the fight or flight, which is great if you're you know, have a quick five minutes, you're running from a tiger, you're, you know, I have to get out of the situation right now. Your body gives this huge uh, release of all these stimulating hormones and your body goes into fight or flight. Um, and the parasympathetic system is what down-regulates that and allows you to be in a state of peace and relaxing. That's when you actually are able to digest your food and pull the most nutrients out of it. That's when uh, your mind is able to calm down. That's uh, a lot of things happen. Um, and those two are constantly um, balancing. So they're, they're both activated. It's not on-off, but there's times when your sympathetic system is way more activated and other times when your parasympathetic system is really activated. But they're constantly in this tug of war. 
And the problem is that when that's sympathetic, when you're living more in a sympathetic state day in and day out, that goes from, okay, I really needed all of that fight or flight for that one incident, but it's never down-regulated. It's always on more than the other one. So what happens is your body is in a chronic state of stress, that chronic pressure, whether it's money, whether it's relationship, whether it's, you know, there's all these other things that your emotions trigger that stress response. So even if you don't feel like, well, I'm not having an anxiety attack, I'm just juggling emotional stress. Your emotional triggers are still triggering all of that sympathetic um, system over here. The sympathetic does not um, allow the body to stop and heal itself on a cellular level because all of its energy is focused on, I have to get away from the tiger and there is no tiger. And stress, um, it eats up really, really important minerals that your body needs in the parasympathetic system for that rest and digest. When you're in the sympathetic, stressed out mindset, um, one of those key, key minerals is magnesium. Well, stress, um, through the adrenal release and all these things, it actually just burns up that magnesium really, really, really fast. And so magnesium is actually the key controller in almost 4,000 enzymes, 3,700 enzymes in your body that an enzyme is a, is a molecule that takes some, one thing in your body and turns it into another. So an enzyme is something that is actually working to create, you know, to take this and turn it into this. Um, and you need that all throughout your body to control every nutrient supply to get a nutrient into its active form or to get something <clears throat> from here to turn it into what your body needs or to take this and to break it down into something that your body can get rid of. Magnesium controls all of that, okay? So stress, just on this, I mean, this is just one thing that stress does. Stress depletes your magnesium. And our diet is largely deficient of magnesium. Um, but it doesn't allow the body to then focus on healing or detoxing things out of the cell or um, repairing cell wall damage or repairing broken protein molecules here or there or, or taking care of the structural molecules. So stress is huge in how well your body can actually heal and regenerate. And we live in a society that is really imbalanced. They've done studies on, there are markers that are released in stress responses. And so we know that as a society, even though we say, well, other countries are far worse off than we are. They're war torn, they're facing famine all the time, there's droughts, there's you know poor uh, conditions, poor living conditions. They are way worse off than we are. Mm -mm, they're not. They don't exhibit the stress markers that we do in this comfortable, convenience-driven society, but we have so much emotional stress that is driving that, that um, they look at other countries, and yes, they have, they have horrible conditions in some cases, but the stress goes away as communities then come together as people. There is more emotional healing that goes on among people who are maybe used to certain kinds of stress, those acute stresses. But once that acute stress is over, mentally, people are coping with it better in other countries. Our culture can't do that. Um, our electronic and screen age, where we are constantly under a barrage of input from every social media outlet, every news channel, every radio wave, it's, oh my word, I'm, I'm hearing so many things that are so terrible and so stressful and we're, we're being bombarded by that all of the time. And so actually learning how to unplug, how to find a way to decrease the stress in your life. And no, we can't change circumstances. So it has to be how we, um, how we deal with the things that we hear. 
and whether um, I believe in God and I believe that that grounds my stress level because I have a higher being to go to and I can pray and I can read my Bible and I feel that there is a huge amount of peace that comes with that. Um, people that don't believe in God, there's tons of actual scientific reports that say meditation, regardless of your background or religious belief, that meditating where you are blocking out the barrage of things that is coming mentally, where you can literally just unplug, turn your brain off, that is like a reset button for your stress level. So regardless of where you're coming from in your personal beliefs, um, things like meditating or praying or getting away, taking a walk in the woods or a walk in your backyard, a walk through the neighborhood, some place where you can get away from your emotional barrage. Those have real life health benefits. It's been studied. Okay, it doesn't take while well, going to the some remote location for three weeks to unplug. No, you can take a little bit of time every day and go out and walk around your yard, look at the flowers and appreciate them. Those are little tiny things that can actually decrease the stress level in your life. So stress plays a huge role in health and that's a paradigm shift. That's another thing that your doctor is gonna say, no, that doesn't have anything to do with, you know, why you have high blood pressure, why you have diabetes. Um, and so those are three big issues. And my, my other talks are usually bits and pieces of, well, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. Um, but I'm kind of giving you today just an overview of this paradigm shift that I had to go through. I had a lot more to unlearn than uh, most people about health and about the cause of disease. But I'm telling you that those are huge, huge issues, and those are all in your control. Not, oh, I'm just throwing up my hands because it's my genetics, or it's my, you know, that happened in the past, I can't change it, the damage is done, I have to live with it the rest of my life. This is a paradigm shift that I'm trying to get people to understand. Um, and it took me a long time, and looking at science behind it, and listening to all these other doctors who have been there way before I was, to go, wow, in the last, you know, 150 years, medicine drastically changed its direction and is driven by money. Um, there's, a, there's a line from this Dr. Um, William Davis who wrote the book Wheat Belly. He wrote another book, and it's called Undoctored. And he said this in an interview, and I said, oh, my word, I'm stealing that tagline because his quote was this, you don't need health care to get healthy. And that is a paradigm shift for, as a patient, and I've been a patient myself, I know what it's like to sit in a patient's seat and get bad news. Um, as a patient, to understand that your health is largely in your control and not your doctors and not in the healthcare system, that is what I'm trying to get people to understand, that there is a root cause that goes beyond the label of your symptom, which we have called a disease. Um, it's much, much deeper on a cellular level. What is going on in your body? Well, there's a lot, and um, that's what I am continuing to study and learn, and I learn new things all the time. I'm just shocked and amazed how much information is out there and how much continues to come out. And it's science that even when it is published in a regular journal, it's largely overlooked because it doesn't fit the system and there's no money to be made in having people eat healthy. And there's no lobbying behind actually curing a disease. Um, and so as bad as it sounds, you know, while the big bad system wasn't set up this way, it really is not designed to get people healthy. It's designed to keep them um, coming back and managing those symptoms. That's how the healthcare system makes money. Even though it says, well, it's about wanting you to be as healthy as possible. It's really not. It left those roots a long time ago. And so understanding that a root cause of disease is going back to a cellular level and medicine says we can't reach the cellular level, and I say you can. You can as an individual. And it starts with things that you eat, 
detoxing the body and your lifestyle. I mean, those are three fundamental things that all change you on a cellular level. And so my um, other bits and pieces that I talk about and things that I post here are all pictures of that. And um, I hope that people can start to have that shift in their mindset because when you realize that, then you realize there's things you can do and you have in your control. So um, that's really what I wanted to kind of share is a little more of that foundational belief of where I'm coming from and what I hope that people start to see um, that it's not, you don't just have to rely on what your doctor says and you shouldn't fault your doctor for not looking harder or not looking for a root cause because the whole system as a whole doesn't work that way and the people who try to don't fit in the system and I that's why I left the system um, that's why I left that whole picture of healthcare because I really felt like but this isn't helping people it's just they're just coming back again in another month and another three months and another six months to manage the same symptoms and when it fails I just increase their medicine because that's all I know how to do that's all your doctors literally know how to do and so as I learn, I continue to share bits and pieces about things that you can do that are not magical secrets. These are things that while some of the science has caught up, it's getting back to, um, back to understanding our role with nature and how we should be interacting with it. Uh, everything from plants and those microbiomes that live in our gut is a whole other ecosystem that if we treat it right, it literally heals many, many things in our bodies. I mean, this is something that I didn't learn in medical school. Um, so these bits and pieces of information, I hope, is helpful. But this is a big root cause, uh, understanding that there is a root cause. This is a big paradigm shift for most people. So um, I hope you dwell on it. Rewatch this if you need to. And if you have specific questions, ask me. Um, but it really doesn't boil down to, well, how do I treat my thyroid or how do I treat my diabetes? It comes back to really these three fundamental things of your diet, nutrition, detoxing, and your lifestyle. Those three issues you do have control over. And when you are doing the right things and the right balance and maybe some supplements here and there as needed, uh, then everything else downstream changes, regardless of what we had labeled it as. Regardless of it's your insomnia or your diabetes, guess what? When you fix these things, it helps everything, everything. So um, it's not about treating a specific disease. That's a paradigm shift. So I hope this is helpful, um, and I will see you again next week. Um, please share this and um, think about it because it takes... It takes some serious uh, self-questioning as to how each of us has been wrapped up in this mindset that um, my doctor knows everything because believe me, they don't. Uh, they know about disease labels and pharmacology, absolutely, but that's all they were taught. And going beyond that, you have to go beyond that to get to the root cause. So hope you have a great day and a great week, and I will see you guys later. Bye.